Hello and welcome. In today's episode, I'm going to share dogman encounters I came across on the internet. These stories include a man who saw something he couldn't quite get over seeing, someone who thinks they are being stalked by a dogman, and one of the most interesting stories I think I've ever come across that includes a territorial battle between a dogman and a bear. But first, we start with a story from a poster who saw a massive canine-like creature by letting his dog out late one night. Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, click on the join button below. Alright, let's get into today's stories. The first story of this episode comes to us from the cryptid capital of the US, Michigan. I jest, but it does seem like there are a lot more stories coming out of Michigan than anywhere else. The original poster, or OP, gives the account of the time he saw a dogman one night while letting out his dog. He does not say where exactly his story takes place, just that he lived in central Michigan at the time. He lived with his parents in a small residential suburban neighborhood that was surrounded by cornfields. He does mention that he lived in the more populated area of town, as his house was within walking distance of what was considered downtown. The street he lives on is not dark or isolated and the houses are fairly close together. He begins his post by saying that he doesn't really believe in the paranormal, but he has an open mind when it comes to the topic and leaves the door open to be convinced. Well, his encounter that night certainly went a long way in convincing him there are weird, unexplained things out in this world. It was about 2.30 in the morning, but it was normal for the OP to be up at that time. In fact, he and his dog had fallen into a routine where his dog would show up at his door huffing to let the OP know he was there and that he needed to go out. So off they go down the stairs to the front door where his dog went out on his own without the need for a leash or even a fence due to him being very well trained and an older dog. After he went out to do his business, he would come back to the door on his own where the OP would let him in and the two of them would go off to the kitchen for a snack. However, on this night, the OP let him out and starts off to the kitchen to begin making their snack when he notices that his dog is still standing on the porch, staring at something across the street. This isn't completely out of the ordinary, but he continued standing there for much longer than he usually did and this is what caught the OP's attention. Finally, the dog walked down the porch and the OP followed his eyeline to see what it was that he was looking at. That's when he saw something slinking, as he puts it, across his neighbor's yard to the right of their driveway. It looked to be a very large dog or even a wolf. He watched the creature for a few moments trying to figure out what exactly it was. It looked like a dog, but something about it just wasn't right. Its body was way too long to be that of a dog, and the way it was moving was not normal. Also, it looked like it was blurry even though it was only about 50 feet from his house. That's the only word he can think of to describe what it looked like in that moment. Blurry. Nothing made sense about the creature. He quickly broke out of his trance as panic rushed through him. This thing had yet to notice his dog, but if it did, his dog would not stand a chance. He went over and slowly opened the outer door, hoping to make just enough noise to alert his dog that he was there and nothing else. Lucky for him, his dog noticed him right away and ran back toward the house. But at the same time, the creature started slowly turning toward him, moving in such an unnatural way. He describes it as almost looking like animatronics or something similar. He still was unsure what it was that he was looking at, but somewhere deep down he had this feeling that he knew he wasn't supposed to be seeing whatever this thing was. His dog made it inside the house just as this thing began to turn toward him and he looked down for a second to watch his dog come through the door and close it. But when he looked back up, the being had moved from the right of the driveway to about 30 feet left of it in the blink of an eye. And it was now standing on its hind legs, staring right at the OP. Seeing this thing standing at its full height, which he estimates at about 7 to 8 feet tall, and now staring directly at him really freaked him out. Not to mention how fast and how far it moved in a matter of seconds. All without making a sound. 
He looked away from the creature again, this time to lock his door, and when he looked back up, it was gone. The whole encounter lasted about 20 to 30 seconds according to the OP, but it left him shaking as he gave his dog his snack and ran downstairs to his brother's room in the basement. He told his brother what he saw, but his brother gave him what he calls a normal 19-year-old response while continuing to focus more on the video game he was playing than his brother. Wow, what the F, that's super weird. He didn't care how his brother reacted though, he just needed to tell someone what he saw. If for no other reason than for him to know that it actually happened rather than him waking up the next day trying to convince himself it was just a dream. Over the course of the next few days, he told anyone who would listen, which included his parents. The people he told who are closer to him seemed more unsettled than those who weren't because he doesn't usually believe in such things, and they could tell he was definitely shaken by what transpired. Unable to shake what he saw, he took to the internet for answers and came across something that exactly matched the description of the creature. That was a dogman which he had never heard of until researching what he saw. His further searches led him to the forum where he posted his story, fully convinced that he saw a dogman that night. It's a good thing the OP noticed his dog was acting strange and then saw the creature before it noticed his dog out there alone. There's no telling what might have happened if he hadn't. But then to have this creature not only notice him, but to look down and back up to see that it had moved an impossible distance in a matter of seconds and was now standing on its hind legs staring at him? I think any of us would have been unnerved and freaked out by that. Especially looking at a creature that, until that moment, was supposed to only exist in fiction, legend, and lore. I think this is the thing that rattles the people in these encounters the most having something fictional become reality and not being able to process that thought, much less what they are looking at. Those of us who haven't seen a cryptid can try to imagine how we would react or feel in that moment, but the truth is we have no idea until we are standing there looking at a creature that isn't supposed to exist. Luckily though, this was a one-off encounter where the creature didn't take an interest in him and didn't hang around. He was just unlucky enough to see it while it was passing through. What do you think? And will you be taking an extra look around when you let your pets out at night? The next story also comes to us from Michigan, with this story taking place in northern Michigan. It seems my earlier statement about Michigan being the cryptic capital of the U.S. is truer than I thought. Anyway, the original poster of this story took to the internet to share her uncle's story, who is no longer with us. She does not say exactly where this story takes place, just that she lived on 5,000 acres of farm and ranch land that backed up to land owned by the state. The original poster describes the land where she grew up as miles of forest and pasture that made her and her family tough, which were all hunters, fishermen, and outdoorsmen. Therefore, it took a lot to spook them. Her uncle was the epitome of this as he was six foot four, a military man who was built like a wrestler and very skilled in survival tactics. He was also the senior NCO of a prominent special forces division in the US Navy. In short, nothing rattled him. Her uncle was home on leave and it was deer season, so he was out hunting. The OP remembers when he returned as he came home shaking and crying, telling everyone he saw something while out there in the forest. She mentions here that her uncle never cried. She goes on to say that he would have torn someone to shreds before he let them make him cry. But here he was crying. He kept saying he saw a creature he described as Bigfoot mixed with a wolf, and her grandmother was trying to get him to make sense of what he was saying, but he kept telling her that's what he saw. The OP's grandmother immediately got her grandfather and he roused the rest of the men, who all went out and hunted this being. This included her father, a few male cousins, and her uncle, who was still terrified but didn't want to be called a coward. They gathered their shotguns, saddled their horses, and took off into the forest. The OP later learned that they were all aware of the dogman lurking around on and or near their property, but she was kept in the dark. 
When they left, they told her to stay inside until they came back. She had never heard that level of seriousness come from her father or grandfather, so when they left, she went and hid in her room. When the sun set, they still hadn't come back, which worried her because they never stayed in the woods after dark. But not long after, she heard the sound of approaching horses and their voices coming from the barn. This sent a surge of relief through her, but when they came inside, they looked troubled. However, they didn't say anything, she thinks, so as not to scare her. When they ate dinner, her father laid down the law, telling her she was not allowed to play outside or go to the barns alone. In fact, she was supposed to have her grandfather with her at all times moving forward. She didn't much like it, but she did as he said. But when her father and grandfather taught her how to shoot the next day, she knew how serious the situation was. The next night, she heard the adults talking and apparently her uncle saw tracks during his encounter that were bigger than a wolf, but were definitely canine prints. She points out here the fact that they are all avid outdoorsmen and hunters and can easily identify tracks. However, no one could identify the tracks he saw. They also found claw marks about 8 feet high in a tree. No Michigan bear could have made these marks. Throughout their property, they found multiple trees with claw marks at the same height. Unfortunately, they also found mutilated cattle that was done in a way no bear or coyote could have done it. This continued throughout the winter too, when bears would have been hibernating. In total, they lost about 30 to 40 cattle that winter, with every one they lost being mutilated. Every scene had the same wolf or dog tracks in the snow. After his encounter, the OP says her uncle was never the same. He went from never drinking to never not having a bottle with him. He always had a haunted look in his eye, and his personality changed quite dramatically. He stopped hunting and never went into the forest again, and eventually stopped visiting when he was on leave. He did not even return for his brother's funeral, the OP's father, and eventually took his own life. The OP ends her post saying it was heartbreaking seeing him spiral downward the way he did and truly believes that whatever he saw in that forest in northern Michigan ultimately led to his death. This story is a prime example of how seeing one of these creatures can really mess with someone's head. I've talked before about people having PTSD after having an encounter with a cryptid, but the way this story ends is just heartbreaking. Other than that, I'm not entirely sure what else to say about this one. People often describe having their reality shattered when they see a cryptid, and they often say there's no going back. Unfortunately, the OP's uncle just couldn't come back from this one. As for the mutilated cattle on their property, this could point to the work of a dogman, as I've heard many tales where they do this. Other cryptids have been known to also attack livestock, but being that the uncle described a Sasquatch mixed with a dog and the canine-like tracks they saw, I'd have to guess dogmen here. It would seem it was hanging around their property because of the good source of food. What are your thoughts about this one? The next story comes from a poster who asked for help identifying a creature her boyfriend kept seeing. He saw the creature for years but only told her just before she decided to make a post online and search for answers. She says the closest thing she could think of to whatever was following her boyfriend was a dogman, but she does not feel like this is quite right due to the description he gave her. His encounters happened in Central Oregon, but she does not give an exact location. The OP's boyfriend began seeing a creature when he was driving home from his job very late at night or early in the morning, however you want to classify it, but it was always dark out. The creature looked to be black, although he did say he had a hard time telling the exact color due to the lack of light. He describes the being as having gray eyes, running like a bear but being built more like a large fluffy dog and having a massive head. Each time he saw it, it was running on all fours and never on two legs. However, there was one encounter he had with the creature that differed from the other times he saw it. He had stepped out very late at night to take his dog out. 
It was supposed to be a quick trip out then back in, but his dog started freaking out while in the yard. At the time, his dog was young and hyper, but he told his girlfriend the dog's behavior in that instance was different. He was acting scared while growling and barking. That's when the OP's boyfriend looked up and saw a very large silhouette in the darkness and knew it was the creature he had been seeing. It was kind of far away, but he could still see the light from his garage reflected in this thing's eyes. It turned toward him and stared at him and that's when he could truly see how big this thing really was. He immediately turned and ran back inside the house and didn't look outside again that night. Whenever he sees the creature, he is onset by anxiety and is left feeling very stressed out. The OP describes her boyfriend as being very level-headed and an honest person, but he hasn't told anyone about what he saw for fear of being called crazy. He was even afraid of telling her for the same reason. She then asked for anyone to reach out to her if they think they know what this creature might have been. She closed by saying that it had not tried to interact with him, but this did not make his encounters any less creepy by any means. He began having encounters with this thing after listening to a podcast about mysterious unexplained things. She does not remember the name of it. He believes that when he started looking for things like this creature, they began looking back. He also began dealing with depression right around the time he started having these encounters. She does not believe in the paranormal, but does trust her boyfriend, and she believes him when he says he is seeing this thing. Unfortunately, this post is six years old and the account has since been deleted, so there is no way of checking to see if he continued having these encounters with the creature. The recurring sightings of this creature make me think either it has taken an interest in the OP's boyfriend, or it lived in the area and he was just unlucky enough to keep seeing it. There are quite a few stories where someone or multiple people live in a place where there is a cryptid close by and they coexist. The anxiety and stress he feels when he sees this being could point to this being more than that, but these feelings do usually go hand in hand with a cryptid encounter. Like I mentioned in the first story, I think it's the shock of seeing a fictional creature straight out of mythology and legend actually standing there right in front of you. We don't know exactly how to handle it. As for this thing taking an interest in him, dogmen are not shy about coming right up to someone's house looking in windows and even tapping on them. He did see the creature near his home, but again it could have just been passing through the area and he was at the wrong place at the wrong time. However, the OP does mention that her boyfriend said he began looking for things like this. I'm not sure in what capacity he meant or if he actually went out and tried to find something like this, but he is right about one thing. Be careful what you go searching for, because you never know what you will find or what will come searching for you. What do you think? Has this dogman taken an interest in the OP's boyfriend? And has he attracted it by going searching for things like this? The final story of this episode is going to be a long one, but as I mentioned in the intro, it is one of the most interesting, more compelling stories I have come across. It took place in Virginia, where the original poster relays his grandmother and aunt's story of their dogman encounter from the late 1970s. This encounter is different because it includes an apparent altercation between a dogman and a local bear, with the winner claiming the territory as its own. Their encounter took place at their home in very rural Grayson County, Virginia, which is in southwest Virginia, bordering northwest North Carolina, where it meets Tennessee. The county lies in the midst of the Blue Ridge Mountains, which is part of the larger Appalachian Mountain Range. Back then, in the 70s, the term dogman was unheard of, but there was talk in the area at the time of wolves and werewolves in the Appalachians that had been passed down for a long time. There were sightings of a creature by the OP's grandmother, aunt, and their neighbors, which they referred to as the wolf thing or creature. And that's where our story begins. The OP's grandparents lived in the backwoods of Grayson County, which he says to this day is still sparsely populated except for a couple of large towns. The land around their home is thickly forested with hilly terrain. 
To get to their home, you have to travel down a dirt path before taking a gravel road across the North Carolina border before turning back north and crossing back over into Virginia. He says the forests around where they live consisted of pine trees, black oaks, and shrubs about four feet in height. There is a stream about 30 yards from his grandparents' home, and closer to their house are blackberry bushes and some apple trees. There is also a lot of wildlife in the area, including bobcats, foxes, coyotes, mountain lions, and a very large black bear his grandmother referred to as Captain. He was a well-known bear in those parts because he had a patch of white fur on his chest and a hole in his left ear. BOP's grandmother named him Captain because of the way he sat and reached up for apples. It looked like he was saluting. He seemed content to leave the OP's grandparents alone if they left him alone. With the unspoken agreement in place, Captain would stroll past their house on occasion, eating blackberries and apples. Being that he was 500 to 600 pounds as estimated by the OP's grandfather, he was too big to climb the trees. Therefore, he had to grab what was on the ground. Just before the OP's grandmother and aunt had their encounter, his grandfather, who was a former soldier in the Air Force, had taken a job in North Carolina and was gone during the events. Soon after he left for his job, the OP's grandmother and aunt, who was 17 years old at the time, noticed a decrease in the animals in the area. It was summertime and the plants and shrubs were in full bloom, but there were no woodland critters or animals, especially rabbits or deer, to be seen which was normal for that time of year. A coyote they had heard almost every night for about a month leading up to these events had gone silent and seemingly vanished. One of their neighbors, who were few and far between, had stopped by to let them know that their dog had gone missing and that their chicken coop had been smashed into by something. They thought it was the mountain lion that lurked around the area because that was the only thing big enough, other than Captain, that could take down their 80-plus pound farm dog. They ruled out Captain though because the next day they saw him in another part of the forest gorging himself on a deer. The next night his grandmother was woken up by his aunt who heard a bang on the wall outside of her bedroom. They waited until the next morning to go out and check things out, finding a butchered deer laying by the house. Based on the gravel marks in that spot, it looked like something had attacked it and smashed it into the side of the house. His grandmother had grown up in the woods and knew the attack patterns of the predators in the area. Mountain lions would have jumped on the deer's back, leaving claw marks on its flanks and bite marks on its neck. Black bears would have left the deer with a broken neck and bite marks on the head from such an attack. Coyotes, on the off occasion that they did attack a deer, would have bitten its back legs to bring it down. But this deer clearly had its throat ripped out, which was unlike any other predator in the surrounding area. Also, the bite marks were a lot narrower than that of a mountain lion's bite. The following few nights were uneventful other than the OP's grandmother and aunt being woken up during the night to the sound of something panting outside. Sometimes they swore they could hear panting right up against the house. One day, his grandmother was down by the stream picking berries when she noticed some very large canine tracks in the mud. She thought the tracks might belong to the missing dog, so she started following them, but stopped when she heard a loud growl coming from the opposite side of the stream. She looked over and saw a large, bulky brown either coyote or wolf head partially obscured by the foliage. She immediately began backing away from the creature and glanced down to make sure she didn't slip in the creek bed. When she looked back up, the canine-like animal had stood up on its hind legs and was now looking at her over the shrubbery. She had seen canines such as dogs and sometimes foxes stand on their hind legs before, but the sheer size of the being before her caught her off guard. She was only 5'3 and had stood by those same shrubs not long before that moment and her head barely reached the top of the foliage. The creature towered over that same shrubbery. The OP points out here that a predator usually reveals itself in an attempt to intimidate someone. His grandmother managed to back up the hill and when she was almost out of sight the creature stepped out of the foliage walking on its hind legs. The way it moved looked unnatural, but it did not drop back down on all fours. 
She backpedaled back to her house as best she could, and that night she and the OP's aunt once again heard panting, but it was accompanied this time by a howl in the distance and scraping along the house. The next day, they found that the garage door, back door frame, and kitchen window frame all had claw marks on them. The dog man was seen several more times over the course of that week by the OP's grandmother and some of their neighbors. Each time it was seen was on or near the grandparents' property. The OP's aunt only saw it once and that's when she looked out her window one night to see two pointed fuzzy ears. She originally thought it might have been Captain, but the ears were too pointed and too high up to be that of a bear and she could see the top of the head of what the ears belonged to. There was also how pointy the ears were and their brown coloring. Plus, neither ear had a hole in it like Captain's. To add to the weirdness was a very pungent smell on the back door as if something was trying to mark its territory. Wednesday night of that week is when the situation reached its climax, as the distant howling grew closer to their home. The OP's grandmother turned the porch light on and caught a glimpse of the creature running across her lawn on its hind legs. She had seen timber wolves at the zoo, which were up to 150 pounds, but she was certain that whatever was running across her front lawn was more than twice the size of one of these timber wolves. For the next several hours, they heard the enormous beast roaming around the property and pressing against the doors almost as if it was trying to open them. They also caught the shine of its yellow eyes at the windows and long broad fingers reaching up to push against the glass. Being that this took place in the late 70s and long before cell phones, his grandmother had to call the police two towns over from a landline, from which the connection was difficult to establish. She was also distracted by the OP's aunt, who was screaming and running to one of the bedrooms to retrieve a gun. What prompted her to do this was the dogman pressing its face against one of the windows and burying its teeth with its claws fully outstretched. They ended up getting out a shotgun and a rifle because it was clear to them that this thing knew they were in there and it was trying to get inside. They once again heard panting coming from outside, but shortly thereafter, they heard heavy footsteps approaching followed by a loud thump and a flash of fur at the edge of one of the windows. They ran into the pantry locker, which was the innermost room in the house, and remained there with their firearms. The entire time they heard a big commotion coming from outside, which included grunts, barks, and rumbles. The noises coming from the commotion eventually died down, but they had no idea what happened, and no interest in checking things out until the next morning. When they went out in the morning to see the fallout of the loud commotion from the previous night, they found signs of what was obviously a ferocious altercation, but there were no bodies. The ground was ripped up in multiple spots, the side of the house had a dent in it, and there were traces of blood in the grass and on the dirt. They also found a trail through the shrubs and other foliage where something had charged through it, with both canine footprints and other wider footprints in the area. By the end of the week, all of the animals had seemingly returned and they no longer heard any howls. When the OP's grandfather returned from his job in North Carolina, he went out with the OP's aunt and some neighbors to search the area for the wolf-like creature, but they found no trace of it anywhere. The neighbors had also heard howls around their properties, but they had stopped as well. They searched the entire property but found nothing except prints leading off the property and into the mountains. A few days later, the OP's grandmother saw Captain rubbing up against a tree and scratching it, marking its territory. He was missing patches of fur, had some healed bite wounds on his arms, cuts across his muzzle, and the hole in his ear had been torn open, which resulted in him now missing half of his ear. He was also walking with a slight limp when she saw him, but this went away with time. The OP's aunt joked that the Captain looked very proud of himself. His grandfather theorized that the strong pungent smell thought to be urine was the dogman trying to mark and claim its territory, but Captain had already claimed it as his own, and the commotion the grandmother and aunt heard that night was them duking it out over the territory. The OP points out here that the dogman was taller than the bear, but was much skinnier, and it appears that bulk and sheer size won out in the fight. 
In doing so, Captain drove the Dogman away from the territory and had inadvertently helped the OP's family in the process. His grandmother, in a way of thanking the big black bear, trimmed the apple trees so that all the apples fell to the ground, giving Captain easier access to all of them. It was the best she could think of doing for him without feeding him directly because she didn't want him to associate humans with food. Winter was close and she wanted to fatten him up for hibernation so he'd be around for the next year, just in case. The OP says his grandmother would say that the forest would always have a boss and it's better to have one not interested in eating you. Therefore, they desired having Captain around over the Dogman, which I'm sure any one of us would choose. As I mentioned, this story takes place in the late 70s and the OP's grandparents and Captain have since passed away. But in the decades that have gone by, the Dogman has never returned. However, three black bears have taken Captain's place in the area, with all three being almost as big as he was, and have seemingly kept any other larger predators especially big canine-like creatures, out of the area. I've often wondered how cryptids interact with other wildlife in the areas they inhabit. Usually in the stories, all wildlife flee the area or grow deathly quiet when cryptids are around, or evidence is found of them eating other animals. But this is the first story I've heard where another animal has actually fought over territory with a cryptid. With the power and speed these beings are usually described as having, I couldn't imagine them being run off by another animal. However, bears are something else entirely when factoring them into this situation. Perhaps the dogman decided it wasn't worth it having to fight a bear any time he entered the area, so he moved on to find another location where he could reign supreme and unchallenged. But before it left the area, it sure did seem to take an interest in the OP's grandmother and aunt. I've talked before about how cryptids take an interest in certain people for whatever reason. There are also stories where these beings, especially dogmen, seem to get off on the fact that they instill so much fear into people. It definitely seemed like it wanted to get into that house. It's a good thing Captain came along to save the day, albeit inadvertently. I couldn't imagine being in that house and having to listen to the commotion of that fight throughout the night. How terrifying that must have been. Also, I do have to mention that one of the reasons I wanted to share this story was because it takes place in the 70s. Other than myths and legends about werewolves throughout history, which some believe to actually be dogmen, there really aren't too many documented encounters from this far back. And it involves all the usual tactics employed by a dogman having taken an interest in someone. Approaching their home, looking inside, tapping and pressing on the windows, knocks on the side of the house throughout the night, and growling and panting being heard. I've done several stories on this channel and hear stories all the time where they exhibit these types of behaviors. But the fight with the bear in this story is definitely a first. What do you think about this one? And that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed these stories. If you'd like to hear more stories like these and other types of cryptids, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you want to send me your story, I'd love to read it. My email is wolfwhocriedcryptid at gmail.com. I will also put it in the description below. With your permission, I may want to use it in an episode. Even if you'd prefer that I didn't share your story on my channel and just want someone to listen, email me. We can privately talk about your encounter. And please remember to keep it civil in the comments section. No one deserves to be ridiculed whether they believe or not. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you at the next episode.